I'd like to thank Noom for sponsoring this video. Have you ever wanted to start a project but just can't get started? You might buy the fabric, invest in some tools, or take a class, but it never launches off the cutting table. My quilt coat project is one of those. Despite several attempts, I just can't get past the planning stage. I've had some mental roadblocks, which I've had a tough time breaking through. So it's going to take some sleuthing, some honesty, and a good dose of forgiveness to move forward. So stick with me and I'll show you how I did it. Hi, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. I give you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you want to make. Let me just start by saying that I am not a clothes horse. I find clothes shopping very disheartening, and I tend to binge shop once a year just by strategically choosing a good mall and then buying anything that I find that fits. And that's actually a lot harder than it sounds because my clothes need to fit well and they need to be in my colors. Honestly, I'm lucky if I find enough clothes to get me through the next year. And in 2019, my yearly shopping trip didn't happen and my clothes became thread worn and washed out. So I had the great idea that I would start making my own clothes again. As a teenager and a young woman, I made a lot of my own clothes, including my wedding dress. But once I had kids, my sewing machine only came out for Halloween costumes and mending. But now with my kids launched into the world, I had the time and space for garment sewing again. So I started buying yardage to make the new clothes with. And if I was going to make clothes, I would need some new patterns and then I would need some new tools. And I realized I would need to do fitting adjustments. So I bought some tissue and craft paper. And then of course I needed muslin to make a shell and maybe some more fabric. Oh, and I bought a serger too, but somehow I just couldn't get started. And as the new year came and I did my annual declutter, I looked at the pile and the expense of it all. And I realized it was time to take some of my own advice. I have already covered how to jumpstart an old UFO in a previous video that I'll link in the notes. I give you tips on evaluating a project and creating a plan, breaking it down into smaller steps and setting a timeline. And I did that. I got out my pattern, read the instructions, cut out some shapes, I watched a couple of videos on full bust adjustments, altered my pattern pieces, cut my muslin, and made my shell. Now it wasn't perfect, but that's what a muslin is for. And I just needed to make some adjustments to the armhole. Unfortunately, that was 2020. And between the pandemic and my son's illness, by the time I made it back to my pattern, it no longer fit, as I had put on 15 pounds. Then in early 2021, cool coats became a thing. And though I didn't have an old quilt to cut up, I did have a stack of blocks that I wanted to use. I also had a pattern that I could use for this. So I thought, this is how I'll get my clothing sojo back. I'll start with a coat, use up my blocks and make a video about it. It's a win, win, win. So I started a project board. I laid out some plans, put it on the calendar. But when it came time to make it, the video always seemed to get pushed back a week again and again until finally after six months, I took it off the calendar altogether. Now I do like a challenge and I had intentionally made an announcement in one of my videos that I was making a quilt coat to keep me accountable. So though it was off the video list, it was still in the back of my head swimming around. So last fall, I took another run at it. I threw some money at it by purchasing fabric for the lining and buying a tailor's ham. And this time I started with the actual quilt. What size and shape did the quilt need to be so that I could cut all my pattern pieces from it? And then I realized I had made a huge miscalculation. First, I didn't have enough blocks to make it big enough. And my blocks were all finishing at six inches. Since many of the pattern pieces were narrower than six inches, I realized that most of my blocks would be cut in half. And then I laid out all my blocks on the floor and realized it looked like one hot mess. I had made them in all sorts of colors and values from my scrap pile. 
and altogether I could clearly see that it was nothing I wanted to wear. Now I did turn those blocks into a quilt for my youngest son for his birthday and you can see the finished quilt in my video about stashing. But now I have a project with no blocks and I really need to question myself do I really want to make this cool coat? When I get stuck in decluttering projects, I will shut my eyes and try to envision the final result. If I don't like what I see, or I can't see a loved one enjoying it, it is a definite no. And with some projects, I can't even see the final product. And I realized that was holding me back here. I had not thought through my colors or the construction method. So one day this past January, when I should have been doing something else, I went down this rabbit hole. I found photos online of similar coats in colors that I liked. And I realized that I wanted more texture in my coat. And I really liked this fuchsia contrast. And I love the big full collar. And I also realized that because of the pattern pieces shape, if they cut them from one large quilt, I would have a ton of wastage. So I decided that I would make each piece separately in a quilt as you go method. So I'm pretty happy. I really like this idea. I have all the fabric, all the tools, all the equipment, but the funny thing is months pass and I still can't get started. I do talk myself out of buying an expensive dress frame, but something is still holding me back. So what is my next move? I sit myself down in a quiet space, I shut my eyes and I envision the day that I can start this project. What does it look like? What are the ideal conditions? And it's amazing how fast all these negative voices started. You don't know what you're doing, but I do have a good plan and I brush that thought aside. This is real ugly. I don't think so. And I really love the colors. You're too old. That's a bit nasty, but I really think I can pull this off. You're too fat and that one hurts. And as my brain spins, trying to turn that into self-acceptance, and appreciation of my older body, a huge wave of anger comes over me because I realize I am not happy in my own skin. I know that we are all in this juggling act, trying to balance family, work, and home. And that little time allotment that we give to me time, we then have to splice it into nurturing our brain, feeding our souls, and taking care of our bodies. And it's hardly surprising when we can't fit it all in. Personally, I have never been a skinny person, but in the past, I have always tried to be fit. That is until menopause hit. And quite frankly, I gave up even trying for years. But in 2019, I had finally begun to shed those menopausal pounds and then COVID hit and my son got sick. My YouTube channel took off and all that weight came back as my health got kicked down that priority list. It's been two years now. And though I can't say that it's easier to fit it all in, I feel my life does have an equilibrium to it. And it's probably time to stop looking backwards and start looking forwards. I got up and started handling all the fabric that I purchased all the patterns, the tissue paper. And I realized that I truly wanted to be wearing these colors and I was ready to find a way to healthier living. But saying it and finding the solution has not been easy as I don't do diets and I don't have time for a gym membership. And we all know there's no miracle pill. Recently, my chiropractor told me that she had lost weight with Noom. So I thought I would give it a look and I signed up on June 1st. And Noom asked me to tell you about my experience and sponsored this video. Noom is not a diet. It is daily lessons based on the science of how your brain works and the why behind the decisions that you make, specifically behind exercise and food. I use Noom to track my meals, my weight, my steps, and my water intake. And when I walk my dog in the morning, I listen to the daily lessons, the motivations, and do the quizzes. And guess what? 
I have found myself making different choices. I had no idea I wasn't drinking enough water. Mando's happier as we go for a longer walk in the evening. And I find myself choosing to take only one cookie after dinner and not three. I find I'm happier and sleeping better. And there is no specialty food and I still have a nightly family dinner. Noom knows that slip ups and surges are going to be part of the journey. So they are helping me develop strategies for when that happens. So if I go overboard at the wedding I'm attending this Saturday, I can turn my negative thought distortions into positives and get back on track. And if I need to, I can ask my personal coach for guidance. It's been three weeks so far and I've lost five pounds. But honestly, for me, it's not about that number. I am looking for lasting change to my overall health. And if you would like to try Noom, click on the link in my description below or go to noom.com slash just get it done quilts to take your free Noom evaluation. And now with a taste of success behind me, today's the day that I'm moving forward with my coat. And the goal for me today is to get my pattern adjustments done. Thank you for joining me on this Quilt Coat Odyssey. This is part one of what I think will be a three-part series. And there's probably going to be a couple more speed bumps along the way. So be sure to subscribe. Take care and I'll see you next time.